We present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Liz Fraser in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And welcome once again to Just a Minute. And somebody's whistling. Derek Nemo, it's you. Will you please keep quiet? Sorry. Derek, why are you whistling before we've even started? Just a little seasonal whistling, that's all. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're all trying to get into the festive spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. And also, it's my pleasure to welcome Liz Fraser. For the first time, she's going to try and do battle with these three clever protagonists of the game and see what she can do for the list outside. Um, once again, I'm going to ask them all to speak if they can uh, for 60 seconds on some subject without hesitation, without repetition and without deviating from the subject. And of course, according to how well they do it and whether they challenge, they will gain points or give them away. Uh, Clement Freud, will you begin this week, please? The subject, very seasonal, stuffing your Christmas bird. That means <laughs> can you talk about that subject for 60 seconds starting now? Any feathered friend which is afloat at this time of year may be called a Christmas bird. And if you are about to stuff one, I think you should take great care not to choose a bird that is too small, like a sparrow or <laughs> a dove. In fact, a turkey, a chicken, a goose would be ideal animals for this sort of treatment. I feel that... It is ignominious to put your hands inside such poetry <laughs> and prefer personally to get my stuffing done on the outside, usually in a roasting tray, keeping such implements as I might use in my culinary pursuits cleaner and less infected than they would otherwise be. But there are many. A daring name you challenge. Why? No hesitation. No. I'm keeping it with Clement Freud. Six, so he gains a point because I disagree with the challenge. Six seconds left. Stuffing your Christmas bird, Clement, uh, now. Some people think that bird being a synonym... <laughs> uh, for those of you who may be fairly new to the game, when the whistle goes, it tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Clement Freud, who now has a commanding lead of two over everybody else because nobody else has yet scored. <laughs> and uh, Derek, it's your turn to begin. The subject is stocking fillers. Can you talk to us? <laughs> That's a dirty laugh in the audience. <laughs> Anyway, Derek, uh, stocking fillers, uh, 60 seconds, starting now. Responding to the dirty laugh in the audience, I would say that my favourite stocking filler is long limbs encased in a pair of these same stockings that we are talking about. On the other hand, there is a dear little man who lives in uh, Snowman. Clement Freud, why have you challenged? He's talking about legs and suddenly says, on the other hand, which <laughs> must be... <laughs> Give Clement Freud uh, an extra point for a clever challenge, but it's, Derek wasn't deviating from the subject on the card. Stocking fillers, Derek, you keep the subject and continue, and there are 42 seconds left starting now. In Snowland lives a charming old gentleman with a white beard, as every boy and girl knows. I didn't uh, know that. Liz, <laughs> you challenged. Yes, I didn't know that. She's no, not a boy. Well, I'm You're sorry that you don't know it, Liz, and maybe after the show I can explain to you all about Father Christmas. <laughs> You see, uh, as you, he wasn't actually deviating from the subject, he was keeping going. The fact that you didn't know about it, unlike everybody else, it, it's very sad. It is <laughs> But it means that uh, Derek still keeps the subject, and he gets a point, of course, and there are 35 seconds left, stocking fillers, starting now. Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, as Nicholas Parsons would say, keeps his stocking fillers in the large sack which he keeps on the back of his sleigh. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. The word keep occurred twice. Yes, he, that is right. You did say keep twice. It was a bit, no? Yes, you did. It's rather difficult. Keep, keep. Small words, not to repeat keep, them occasionally. Keep, keep. Uh, Kenneth, I agree with your challenge, so you gained a point, and you have 27 seconds for stocking fillers starting now. Little cuddly bunnies made of cotton wool and harmless material like that, and marzipans, chocolates, and little wafers. You <laughs> delight Liz, my love, you challenged. He said little twice. Yes, I'm afraid you did. And she was listening terribly well, got him very sharply there. And because you see, if you press your buzzer first, it eliminates all the other buzzers. Quite so right. Quite I don't want to eliminate anybody else's buzzer. No, well, 
So Liz, you've gained a point, and uh, you have 15 seconds now to take over the subject of stocking fillers starting now. One of the advantages of growing older and bigger is that one's stockings enlarge with age, which means that one can get more fillings into one's <laughs> hosiery. <laughs> hesitation. There was a definite hesitation, I'm afraid, Liz. Derek, you gain a point. I agree with the challenge. So there are three seconds left now for you to take over stocking fillers starting now. When I wake up on Christmas morning, I find the lovely orange right at the bottom next to a uh, Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? <laughs> Um, Christmas, you said it before. You did say Christmas before, you used Father Christmas before, and now you say Christmas. So Absolutely it... right. Well listened. <laughs> Occasionally they can't think of any other way to argue their way back to it, so they come magnanimous. Uh, Kenneth listened well, he got in just with three quarters of a second to go on stocky fillers. <laughs> Kenneth starting now. Silver bills! <laughs> Kenneth Williams was speaking then when the whistle went, so he gains that extra point, and to use his phrase, he has leapt into the lead. Well, thank the goodness, run. my record has been abysmal over the last few weeks. Abysmal! But you've left the only way I can describe it. It's been abysmal. I've seen no kind of encouragement, and we all need a bit of ego massage. <laughs> <laughs> You're behaving in an abysmal way. Oh, <laughs> Yes, because you've leapt into the lead alongside Clement Freud. It's not oh, quite enough I to... See you. And Liz Fraser, it's your turn to begin. <laughs> so, the subject is um, still on the Christmas theme. I'm glad to say, things I've found in crackers. <laughs> and as a little cracker yourself, Liz, oh, will you goodness. talk for 60 seconds on that subject, starting now? One of the things that I found in crackers was my husband. It happened like this. I had an invitation some years ago to attend a housewarming party by a friend. And I agreed and accepted with alacrity and bejeweled and, de and bedecked. I arrived at her abode and I had the feeling that something very exciting was going to happen. And I looked around the rooms to see if there was some sort of nice man that I could perhaps be attached to. A tall, dark stranger approached me and asked me where the loo was. <laughs> I didn't know, so I directed him to the hostess who was standing near me at the time, and another man approached me, and we found that we had a great deal in common. For instance, we both enjoyed Dick Nimmo's feet, Clement Freud's cooking, Kenneth Williams' wit, and Nicholas Parsons' milk. And... <laughs> then uh, proposed to me <laughs> uh, well, I must Liz... say that the house name the house's name was crackers Liz Fraser has joined us for the first time she started with a subject and uh, she managed to keep it right through to the end so she gets a bonus point for speaking for 60 seconds well done Liz um, Clement, your turn to begin. The subject is the fairy on the top of the Christmas tree. <laughs> and that laugh, uh, listeners, was occasioned by the fact that Clement Freud looked very rapidly at every member of the team here to decide which one he thought he should apply this to. And he finished up with Liz Fraser. So uh, the subject is the fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, Clement Freud, 60 seconds, starting now. It's a very long way up the top of the Christmas tree, as opposed to the fairy lower down on the same piece of... Uh... Oh. <laughs> Liz Fraser, you uh, chant. I think hesitation. You think and I think, and so you gain a point, Liz, and you take over the subject of, of the fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, 50 seconds left, starting now. There are no fairies at the top of our Christmas tree because... Uh, <laughs> I knew I was going to talk Again, about... Williams, your chant. Uh, great hesitation. Yes, yes I'm afraid I didn't know what I was uh, going to say. my darling, I don't like to be ungallant, but I feel... <laughs> Weren't you were being absolutely accurate. Oh, so, you Kenneth, much, you get a point. You take over the subject. There are 45 seconds left. The fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, starting now. She is generally a rather delicate-looking creature with tinsel and porcelain, bison-like features, and everyone says there she is presiding over this festive gathering and spreading light and joy from the top of her perishing Christmas tree. <laughs> and 
<laughs> pity, is indeed, of course, it is in the process of decay, as you all know, when you come to clear up those dreadful needles that get everywhere. I once sat on them and had them with <laughs> appalling trouble afterwards, but only a very greasy emollient eased my anguish. <laughs> Why? Well, he's talking about something really rather nasty, which has got nothing to do with the fairy. It was way up on the top of the tree. Yes, and there are eight seconds left, Derek, for the fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, starting now. When I was a small boy, I used to sing a lovely song, which was, Every little boy would like to be a fairy. Uh, Clement Freud, why have you challenged? Repetition. What? When I was a small boy, boy. Oh, that's right, yes. Um, Clement, you gain the subject, <laughs> and there are three seconds left. The fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, starting now. Her name is Gladys, and she had the most terrible time <laughs> getting up. Uh, Clement Freud then gained the extra point for speaking when the whistle went. I've never heard of a fairy called Gladys. What a pity. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gladys got you an extra point, an extra laugh, and you're now equal in the lead with Kenneth Williams. Oh, what an honour for you, Clement. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Derek Nimmo, your turn to begin. The subject, mistletoe. Can you talk to us about that kissable subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Mistletoe is a rather nasty parasitic creature that grows round fruit trees, apples and pears in particular. It's been used from the ancient times to depict something which is really rather nasty, so we won't talk about that. We'll talk about its modern usage, which is to kiss young ladies beneath. And there's nothing I like more, in fact, than singing, Here we are. Beneath the mistletoe, no young... Liz Fraser, why who challenged? Beneath twice. Two beneaths give you an extra point, another point, I mean, and you take over the subject of mistletoe, and there are 36 seconds left, starting now. I always thought that it would be the most romantic thing to be kissed underneath the mistletoe, and every year I would stand strategically placed under this... Under uh, twice. Derek, <laughs> never, 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 never. Derek, I agree with the challenge of hesitation. You get another point, and there are 12 seconds left, mistletoe, starting now. Once I spent Yuletide south of the equator, and there they had plastic mistletoe. I'm nothing more obscene have I ever seen. And if you... Um, uh, Liz Fraser, why have you challenged? Is seen, seen, a verb No, you said obscene, obscene. obscene. I've seen. <laughs> oh, I do think <laughs> It was well listened. <laughs> But not correct. So Derek gets another point, and there are three seconds left for mistletoe, Derek, starting now. Pucker up your lips, babe. I'm coming in on the down. <laughs> Kenneth, party game. Can you tell us something about party games? And there are 60 seconds to do it, starting now. I think it was probably expressed most beautifully by Bernard Gascoigne when he wrote, Here's a pencil and pad. You won't find it bad. These are games that we all of us know. Pass them on as you write them and ad infinitum. It's just party games. Make a good evening go. <laughs> and even as he uttered those words to me for the first time, a tear began to form in my eye and drop to the floor below, where it ate its way through to the floorboards. <laughs> Derek Nimmo, why have you challenged? Floor and then floorboards. Two floors. Yes, alas, it was yeah. a pity. Oh, he's, he's it's very um... fly, isn't he? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was a lovely story. But so, Derek. What a beautiful poem. And yes, and what a beautiful teardrop right through to the floorboard. <laughs> anyway, uh, Derek, I agree with the challenge. There are there 19 seconds left for party games starting now. My favourite party game is called Stuffing Your Christmas Bird. <laughs> what you have to do is to get a large turkey and some stage and onion stuffing, and everybody gathers. This phrase, why have you challenged? Stuffing twice. Mm. Stuffing your yes, Christmas bird right, stuffing. Right. That's quite correct, Liz. Well, listen. Fourteen <laughs> seconds left for you, Liz. You <laughs> take over the subject of party games starting now. Are you... Oh, Clement Roy, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Hesitation, not at all. <laughs> no, that was that. breath. First <laughs> time on the show, and there you... Anyway, Liz, you have another point, and there are 14 <laughs> seconds... 13 seconds left for party games starting now. I first met... Clement Freud, why have you challenged? Hesitation. No. <laughs> Even less hesitation. There are 13 seconds left for party games, uh, Liz, starting now. I first met Clement Freud at a party, and he asked if I would per participate... Uh, in Clement Freud, you've challenged. 
hesitation. Hesitation. I <laughs> well, she didn't let her get out what she was going to uh, say. You say that's why. <laughs> I must say, she started over the thought of what she was going to yeah, say. Yes. Yeah. Oh dear, what a pity. We may never know. Perhaps it's as well. Perhaps the series will continue. Um, there are seven seconds left with you, Clement Freud, to continue with party games starting now. My favourite party game is getting Ebenezer Scrooge into a stocking filler. Um, Kenneth Williams, why have you challenged? It's deviation. Getting Ebenezer Scrooge into a stocking... It's, it's impossible uh, at this particular time yes. because he does not exist. <laughs> I give you a point and the subject, and there are two and a half seconds left. Party games starting now. We're supposed to take hold of your partner's hand and in her ear... <laughs> Well, at the end of that round, uh, Kenneth was speaking once again, so he got the extra point. Liz Fraser crept up in the middle of that game and has now overtaken them, has one point lead over the other three at the end oh. of that round. Mm. So it really is neck and neck. Liz, your turn to begin. The subject is carol singing. Would you talk about that for 60 seconds, starting now? Good King Wenceslas <laughs> step uh, Kenneth, out. why have you... Uh... I've challenged because deviation, you should ask to talk about it and you should to sing about it. Yeah, that's a... You carol asked singing. to talk about it. Yes, it is a very good challenge, because I did say I should talk about it, and she started to demonstrate it. Well, she's so, new. What's that? She's new. She's new. So let me put it to the audience. Now, do you think, I say, will you talk about it? She was demonstrating it. Uh, do you, if you agree with Kenneth's challenge, would oh. you cheer? And if you disagree, will you boo? And will you all do it together now? <laughs> will you disagree with Kenneth? You're on the lady's side. <laughs> She's new to the game, which seems very justified. So you Liz... brainwashed all of them. <laughs> Liz gains a point and keeps the subject. There are 55 seconds left for carol singing starting now. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even brightly. Okay, where are you chant? Where were all those Anne? Anne, Chris, Anne, all those Anne. <laughs> Well, technically, she was um, repeating herself, wasn't oh, she? So I suppose Anne. to be fair. What? Oh, that is no, going to be a rule to, from now on. Give it to Kenneth. And I did say and. and no, I'm, I'm not going to charge any points. That's the <laughs> fairest thing to do. I'm going to leave the subject with Liz Fraser. No points charged because I'm not going to charge on Anne's. I think we've once before established that. 47 seconds left. Carol singing Liz starting now. It is not generally known that I have the most exquisite voice with the range of... Uh, Clement Freud challenged that time. Hesitation. Hesitation. I agree, Clement, you gain a point and the subject, and there are 42 seconds left. Carol singing starting now. When the mince pie is wheeled in on the trolley, we hold hands and sing carols, especially Carol. She... Uh, Liz Fraser challenged. Why? Well, I thought he said Carol I twice, know, but the first one was actually this Carol's. This is what happens. He tries to be clever, yes. and the first person in often gets stumped. So I disagree, because it was Carol's, and now it's a girl called Carol. Clement gets another point, and there are 33 seconds left for Carol singing Clement, starting now. The holly and the ivy and good and king and Wenceslas <laughs> and many other lovely Carol's and... Uh, Liz Fraser, why do you Carol's. <laughs> Yes, well done. It's, it wasn't for and. It's, um, <laughs> well, you can't. And there are 22 seconds left for carol singing, Liz, starting now. And because I have this marvellous voice, I am asked every Christmas time to go singing with the choirs which are going around the various districts in our area. And I go armed with a flask of gargle water and sing once in Royal David City, Silent Night, Good King Wenceslas. Uh, Derek Nimmo challenge. Repetition of Good King Wenceslas. Yes, because you sang that before. Yes, I did sing that. Before. So Derek Quite got okay. him very clever just before the whistle. There's half a second to go. Carol singing. <laughs> I have Starting a, now. I have a lovely <laughs> new violin. <laughs> The audience here yeah, all went, ah, oh, but you see, it must be fair in the game, because uh, Ian Messler hadn't actually blown the whistle, so Derek was in. And it's even more exciting, because we have three leaders all together, and Kenneth is behind the other three at the end of the night. <laughs> well, as Herodotus said, what is good is good without my saying so. Yeah. <laughs> but you still have a chance to redress the balance, uh, Kenneth. And the subject now is for Clement Freud. It's your turn to begin, Clement, and the subject is punch. And would you talk to us for 60 seconds, punch, starting now? 
If you take equal quantities of cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg, and grate all these and dissolve it in a pint of water, adding a pound of sugar, you get the most excellent bases for a punch, especially if you allow this liquid to boil for an hour or more, and then strain it through a cloth into another vessel, adding to this wine whenever you feel like it, because the important thing about punch is the wine therein must not uh, boil. Derek Nemo Chant. Revolution wine. Yes, we've had wine twice. <laughs> so uh, Derek gains a point and the subject. I wanted to hear the recipe. And there are 30 <laughs> seconds left for punch, Derek, starting now. In the middle of the Victorian era, a very different change came to comedy writing. Uh, Clement Freud's challenge, why? Hesitation. I didn't notice a hesitation. Oh, didn't you? Hesitation. No, you must no, be no, the only no, one. No, 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 I don't know. <laughs> there are 26 seconds for Punch, Derek, starting now. And a magazine came to be born which was called Punch and had on the front of it the gentleman who performed with Judy. Uh, Kenneth and Williams got hesitation. him first then. Hesitation, I agree then. So, Kenneth, you get a point and there are 19 seconds left for Punch, starting now. I received one on my nose <laughs> in a barrack room in Ceylon and I remonstrated. I I said, here, who do you think you're knocking about? What right have <laughs> you? He said, look at that, and showed me his arm on which was three stripes, and I had none. <laughs> and... <laughs> Derek, would you begin the next round? And the subject is port. And there are 60 seconds for you to talk about it, starting now. Well, one of the things I've never really gone along with is any port in a storm. It does seem to be rather a foolish thing to say. Because if one is in a tempest or a hurricane or a whirlwind and at sea, one would rather have... Now, Liz Fraser, why have you challenged? One. One. No, not one. No, not Anne's. Not one one. I, I, I don't think... No, no point scored. Leave the subject with Derek mm -hmm. Nemo. And there are 49 seconds left for port, Derek, starting now. In my... Fist, I'd write to Clement do. Freud challenge. Why? Hesitation. Yes, hesitation. This is a sad thing that sometimes it's difficult to start again. Clement, I have to agree with a definite hesitation. You gain a point, and there are 47 seconds left for port starting now. Port is the name given to a fortified wine made in the Oporto Valley of Portugal, where it is drunk by the English gentry, <laughs> who have for years and generations, centuries in fact, been the only people to involve uh, Liz themselves. Liz Fraser, why have you challenged? Hesitation? Mm. No, he no. did keep going. Mm. He, he was um, running down a little, but he <laughs> kept going. So, uh, uh, Clement, uh, as I disagree with the challenge, you gain another point, and there are 30 seconds left for port starting now. It is traditional at smart dinner parties for the ladies to leave the gentlemen and the males of the species thereafter to consume port while their female counterparts are outside. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why for challenge? Because you don't, Stevie H, you don't consume port, you drink it. You consume, that is the act of eating, you see. You don't eat a drink. No, no, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You're not having it. You tried very hard, but I mean, if you've drunk something or eaten it, it has been consumed, mm. surely. Oh. So... <laughs> I'm afraid to be fair to the game, I have to disagree with the challenge, leave it with Clement Freud and say there are 18 seconds left for port, Clement, starting now. On board ship, port is the left-hand side where starboard is the right, and many a sailor has gone to the wrong place simply because of a failure to acquaint himself with this simple form of direction. While drinking liquid... <laughs> that we have no more time so that is the end of this week's contest if you can call it that because we like to call it a game and I must point out right away that Derek's last challenge wouldn't have made any difference to the final result it's a very fair one a very interesting one because equal in second place we had our guest for this week first time very good Liz, Liz Fraser but by a couple of points only we have the winner once again this week Clement Freud that you enjoyed this particular edition of Just a Minute. All of us here would like to wish you, listening, a very, very happy Christmas. From all of us here, goodbye.
chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by Simon Brett. Present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud, and Catherine Whitehorn in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And it's my pleasure in this particular show to welcome for the first time to try and do battle with these three clever players of the game, Catherine Whitehorn. And once again, the rules are as before. I'm going to ask them each to speak, if they can, for just a minute on some unlikely subject, without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject. And according to how well they do this, they will, of course, gain points or give them away to whoever may be challenging. That is the way we play. And let us begin the show this week with Kenneth Williams. Panache. Panache. Can you talk to us? for 60 seconds on Panache starting now. It's extremely fortunate that you've asked me to discuss this because nobody in this world is more appropriate. It is, of course, derived from tuft of feathers, originally worn on the plume of the helmet. Now... Uh, Catherine Whitehorn, you have challenged. Why? Plume and feathers mean the same thing. I think that counts as repetition. No, no actually, Catherine... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, Catherine, I must explain, we only grant... <laughs> oh, she's most aggressive, isn't she? Well, <laughs> she has already been warned before we started how aggressive all you three are, well. so she's starting right in the, with the right way. Catherine, I think we only give repetition when it's a repetition of the word, but it's a very good try, and as you're new to the game, I'm going to give her a point for that jolly good challenge, but leave the subject with Kenneth and say there are 43 seconds left for Panache Kenneth starting now. In the sense of linguistics, nowadays it is taken to mean that which is done with a flourish, so to speak, or with nicety, great style, which, of course, all I do in dull... Uh, all of which... <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud, you have challenged. Hesitation. Hesitation, I quite oh, it's agree. it's most unfair, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a bit of a... You couldn't describe your style. It was beyond words, <clears throat> Kenneth. I quite understand. Uh, Clement, I agree with your challenge, so you <laughs> take the subject, and there are 24 seconds left for panache starting now. The culinary connotations of this word give it an accent aigu, making it panaché and meaning mixed, as in salade panaché. Uh, Derek Nimmo, you've challenged tradition of panaché, yeah, which is not the word on the card. Yes, it's panache on the card so and not panaché. I give Derek pathetic. the point and the subject, and there are 13 seconds left for panache, starting oh, now. So. How must, wonderfully, it must have been with Henry VIII on the uh, field Clement of the Freud, why did you Repetition of must. Yes, that's true, you see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you're going to be as tough as that, see how much tougher you can get. It's absolutely correct, though I think a little unfair. So I must be correct within the rules of the game. Uh, Clement, you have another point. You take the subject back, and there are 11 seconds left for panache starting now. A panache of salad. To a Derek Nimmo wife who tried. Tradition of salad. <laughs> you yes. didn't? Yes, yes you, you did say I salad. Said it All right. They're getting and A, I said as well. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not going to get two points for that. So there are eight seconds left for you, Derek, to continue with panache starting now. As I walk down the strand, flourishing my shillelagh, people look at me. Clement, Kenneth Williams, you challenge. Oh, uh, yes, repetition, we've just had flourish. Not for me, you haven't. You haven't oh, had well, flourish. It's in the same context. It so doesn't matter, no, <laughs> Kenneth. You haven't had a flourish from uh, Derek before. So, uh... Derek keeps the subject because he gains a point because I disagree with the challenge. There are five seconds left for panache, Derek, starting now. People shout at me in the street and say, you have nearly as much panache as Kenneth Williams. And I say, what hell, thank you so much. <laughs> the 
For those of you who may not know, the whistle tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Derek Nimmo who has gained a commanding lead at the end of that round. In fact, the first round of any show, I've never seen so many points scored. So let us continue. In quite a vein, I hope. Clement Freud, your turn to begin. The subject is curing ham. Will you talk to us about that for 60 seconds, starting now? In order to cure ham, you've got to have a really sick piece of pork, which is smoked. <laughs> And it makes no difference whether it has mildew, blue fly, or green deposits all over it. The important thing is to get it better. And ideally, curing it is achieved by getting malt vinegar and hydrofluoric acid and scrubbing away until every last trace. Uh, Catherine White, and why would challenge? Simply because it's beginning to make me feel sick. You can have me go on. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that even if someone makes you sick on the show, if they haven't deviated or done any of the other crimes, I cannot award it to you, Being sick would be deviating, wouldn't it? If you were sick, yes. And for the record. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to explain to you. But, uh, no, I'm afraid that it's, uh, he wasn't deviating from the subject, even though he well, made you feel sick. Well, at least I've given us a respite, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we've heard from you again, which is lovely, Catherine. So, um, <laughs> uh, Kemmer gets another point, and there are 32 seconds left for curing ham starting now. There are many people who think that this applies to ham which is salted and put away over smoke until such time as it may be eaten and served either as gammon or bacon. And there are in Bradenham, also in Wiltshire and in Yorkshire, companies that specialise particularly in this form of delicacy. I once knew one which had scarlet fever, which... <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Williams, why are you chuck? Deviation, you can't know a ham. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Freud looked Thanks directly at you friends. then. Uh, um, I know some hams. I've acted with some of them as well. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> So in that sense, if you'd had a, a ham couldn't have scarlet fever, I would agree, that is devious. But you challenge for knowing a ham. And you can, technically, because that's the phrase you use in the theatre. So it is not deviation, I'm afraid. Clement Freud gets another point. Four seconds left. Curing hand, Clement, starting now. Who worked at the Old Vic every Tuesday and Thursday in matinee. <laughs> On this occasion, Clement Freud was speaking when the whistle went, so he has jumped into the lead now at the end of the second round, and Catherine Whitehorn and Kenneth Williams are trailing a little behind. Derek Nemo, your turn to begin. The subject is dogs I know well. Can you tell us something about the dogs you know well in 60 seconds, Derek, starting One now? One pair of dogs that I know particularly well are made of brass and a rather lovely Adam design, and I keep them in my fireplace and rest logs on them in the wintertime, particularly at Yuletide, and they give off the most wonderful glow, and I think how pretty they are. I also had a Pekingese, which was given to me by my great-aunt Sarah, which I liked very much in the day. <laughs> Also, I remember... Uh, Kenneth Williams' challenge, why? Well, hesitation. Uh, well, you oh, know, it was almost hesitation, but I think it was such a brilliant twist from saying very, very that I don't <laughs> think we could have lied because it was so beautifully done with such panache that I don't think we could have lied that one. It was very close, so I disagree with the challenge. Jerry gets a point, and there are 38 seconds left for dogs. I know well, Derek, starting now. A Yorkshire terrier that ran aground on... Uh, Clement Freud's challenge. Is it? No hesitation at all. He was keeping going all right. 31 seconds left for you, Derek, having gained another point. Dogs, I know well, starting now. Particularly in the latest, I saw a wonderful great pack of hounds leaping across the turf. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why did you challenge? Deviation. The subject is dogs he knows well. And we've gone through brass ones, Pekingese ones, Yorkshire terriers, and now he's come to a pack of hounds. Yes, I... Uh, you wouldn't be well acquainted with a pack. No, I quite agree, Kenneth. I but think not... it's just going a bit far, dear. <laughs> I agree with your challenge. I don't believe that Derry could be well acquainted with uh, a whole pack of hounds. So, uh, Kenneth, you gain a point. In fact, it's your first point. Well done. And there are 26 seconds left for dogs I know well, starting now. In Morocco, I met a most beautiful dog called Brandy. He fell in love with me at first sight. And... Uh, Catherine White, on why you challenged? Deviation on behalf... on the part of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
What's she mean? What's she mean? What's she mean? Come on, Nick. What's she saying? I can make it. She means that the dog had absolutely supreme taste. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Yes. She was calling into question your taste, but not the dog's. Oh, I see. Uh, in other words, <laughs> the dog thought you were super, but oh, you were not deviating. I'm going to give Catherine a point for that. She gets all her points with these rather brilliant challenges. But I'm afraid he wasn't deviating, strictly speaking, from the subject on the card. So we're still with you, Kenneth, and there are 16 seconds left for dogs I know well starting now. My friend said, put your face right next to his, and with my camera, I will record this loving couple. Surely no finer example in life exists than man with with his friend, the dog. Man's natural friend. Uh, Man who? Uh, what happened there? I'm not sure. That gentleman's furious. Look at his face. Gone white. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to be very furious, but I must be fair, actually, Clement's buzzer did go before the, the whistle. What on behalf of? Uh, what was it, Clement? Repetition of man. You yes. did repeat man, you know. Oh, well, he gets it, does he? I'm afraid he does. I've got oh, to be well, fair, you know. It was, <laughs> it was clever, but there we are. He managed it. And literally, there's only half a second left for dogs, I know. Well, Clement, starting now. Give me a picture. <laughs> So, very artfully getting in just before the whistle once again, Clement Roy gets an extra point. He's increased his lead over Derek Nemo at the end of that round. <laughs> Catherine, your turn to begin. Would you like to talk to us about dieting? For 60 seconds, starting now. Dieting is a subject which every woman journalist has to write about at least twice a year. And the great thing that needs to be known about dieting is those foods which are not fattening. These are particularly food eaten when nobody sees you eating it. Food stolen off other people's plates, especially when they don't see you doing it. Food that has, <laughs> for some reason or another, been left on the side of somebody else's plate. And anything that is left in the dish in the dining room is always known to be not fattening and so constitutes a diet within the meaning of the act. There are other diets which I have followed with greater or lesser success. I've tried dieting by eating nothing except bananas. I've tried dieting by eating nothing except bananas. <laughs> by eating nothing except whiskey, and I can't say that one really worked. I can only say that the next diet that I shall try will be the diet... Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have often accused our three male players of being ungallant. <laughs> But you couldn't say they were ungallant. <laughs> I think we had food about six or seven times. <laughs> eating four or five times. And, uh, well, dieting is the well, subject on the card. the word. That... But no, it was lovely. We loved hearing it. The audience adored it, Catherine. You did it beautifully. You, you've spoken for the first time, but just, you gained some confidence and not even better, I'm sure. Point uh, for the whistle, but you get an extra point for going without being interrupted. So you've now jumped... <laughs> Forward. <laughs> what position is she in? She's still in third place with you. I haven't just scored three. <laughs> no, no, she's a little ahead. There's of some you. juggery pokery. <laughs> going on? What are you doing? Exactly. Come on, have a look. <laughs> Clement Freud. Get nothing. Clement Freud is still in the lead. He's two points ahead of Derek Nimmo. Catherine Whitehorn is now in third place, and you're just a little way behind her now. So, um, Kenneth, it's your turn to begin. And oh, a very thank goodness for that. I feel like I've heard of that. And a very apt subject again at this particular moment, sauce. <laughs> Can you talk to us about sauce, uh, Kenneth, for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, I suppose most people think of it as flavouring, something to be added to their food. Other people think of it as impertinence. <laughs> Derek Nimmo, why did you challenge? Repetition of people. people. Yes, we've had more than other people. Oh, how other... true. How <laughs> very... <laughs> <laughs> how ridiculous you are sometimes. Uh, Derek, you gain the subject and, of course, another point, and there are 51 seconds left for sauce, starting now. I often like a lovely sauce on my gander, don't you? Uh, Kent, this is why have you challenged? Deviation, sauce can be piquant, it can be nutritious, it can be anything, but it can't be lovely. Loveliness. It's not a quality. I disagree. I think you can have a lovely sauce. No, do you know what loveliness means, dear? Yes, I know. It means to love. I know all about that. Well, it's nothing to do with sauce. 
No, but colloquially, some people sometimes say that sort of lovely. We're not here concerned with colloquially. We are, because that's how we speak, colloquially. And when you have to keep going for 60 seconds, when there are people like you trying to challenge, it's very difficult to find exactly the right adjective. So he colloquially was not deviating from the subject. Derek Nimmo gets another point, and he keeps source. And there are 47 seconds left, Derek, starting now. One of the troubles with Kenneth Williams is he always giving the chairman of... Uh, Kenneth Williams, why is a challenge? Deviation of the subject source, not Kenneth Williams. <laughs> I think he was going to say one of the troubles with Kenneth Williams is the source that he gives, but um, I'm going to put it to the audience because uh, Kenneth made a good challenge and obviously Derek uh, was going to get in the word source. He wasn't deviating. But if you think that Kenneth's challenge was justified, will you cheer? And if you think it wasn't, will you boo? And you'll all do it together now. <laughs> I think it was an unjustified challenge without any doubt. <laughs> you should never have asked him. They're a load of idiots. <laughs> Got here out of false pretence. I believe you're coming for nothing. They're all coming for nothing. <laughs> Kenneth, I believe, I believe, Kenneth, I believe your mother's sitting in the audience. Yes, and I shall leave the stage. I'm, <laughs> I'm not given more respect. I should be given respect, shouldn't I? Yes. No. Well, all right. Anyway, you didn't. Uh, the audience have made their decision, and they have said that Derek Nimmo not only keeps the subject, gains a point, and the subject is sauce, Derek. Christ. And there are 44 seconds left, starting now. I like sauce on my Christmas pudding. My aunt Beatrice, who lives in Blas Uches Avenue in Prestatton, North Wales, makes quite the finest sauce that I've ever tasted. She puts a lot of brandy into it, and when it goes on top of the old pod, she sets fire to it. And the pyrotechnics have to be seen to believe, and people come from miles around to warm their hands around this lovely Sauce, and they say, good old! Who's buzzing? Clement Floyd. You Why? can't come for miles around Prestatin because it's a seaside town. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I think we must give him that one, mustn't we? It's uh, only fair. So, well done, Clement. You gain a point and the subject, and there are uh, 22 seconds left for sauce, starting now. If you take English mustard, port wine, and red currant jelly, and melt all three substances in a saucepan, <laughs> you achieve something called Cumberland sauce, which is one of the great classic sauces of this country. It has been said that France has... 123 cheeses, and we have one sauce. <laughs> well, we've certainly got plenty of sauce in that round, and Clement Freud was again speaking when the whistle went, so he now has a uh, lead still over Derek Nimmo, but it's only a lead of one, and the other two are still training a little. Clement Freud, it's your turn to begin. The subject is electricity. Can you talk to us about electricity for 60 seconds, starting now? Electricity is what leaks out of the socket when you remove the bulb. And often have I come into houses which have been fired with this substance to the point of 30, 40, even 60 volts. I've opened the door and someone has said, be careful, um, electricity is around. Uh, Catherine White on your chair. He said, um. Hesitation. It was a hesitation, yes. yes. You say hesitation, I'm not um, it's, it's easier. Well, you can definitely hesitate. Well, yes. I'll say hesitation, but he said um. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right, and you gain the subject at the point, of course, and there are 38 seconds left for electricity starting now. I entirely share uh, the film. Clement Freud, you challenged. Hesitation. Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine has yet to get into her stride in this game so she keeps the subject having yet another point and there are 37 seconds left for electricity Catherine starting now I entirely share, share the Clement Freud you have challenged again didn't think she got into her stride properly <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving her another point oh <laughs> it's at your own expense, you know. So Catherine has another point, and there are 36 seconds left for electricity starting now. I entirely share the fear of electricity that was expressed in Clement Freud's story. I think that I feel the same uh, way about it. Clement Freud, you challenge. She said, um. <laughs> <laughs> so... Hesitation. Yes, yes, all right. There are people who write in about these things, you know, unless we get absolutely clear. Hesitation, Clement. Uh, there are 30 seconds left for you on electricity starting now. On many a wall, there's something called a plug from which this electric... <laughs> <laughs> 
Derek Rivers, challenge. Hesitation. Yes, hesitation, Derek. Taking over the subject and 24 seconds left, starting now. When you go around Piccadilly Circus, one of the things that really strikes you is the amount of electricity that is employed there to light up the great vista that you look at. And people come there, even from Prestatin, to look at it because they know <laughs> that there are the signs of without parallel in the whole of the British Isles. And I do agree with them. And I think it's a tremendous shame that the people of that lovely liquid that they make over in Dublin have taken down their clock because that was one of my happy old childhood memories. Last electric performance by Derek Nimmo gained him an extra point because he was speaking when the whistle went and he's now equal in the lead alongside Clement Freud. Derek, your turn to begin. The subject is custard pies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that makes them laugh so much unless they imagine one on your face or something. But can you talk about it for 60 seconds starting now? They always say that in France there are 257 cheeses, but in England there's only one custard pie. <laughs> I quite agree with them, because this is the sort of thing that any gastronomic pundit loves to give out, whether it is true or not. But I always like to devour this particular delicacy. If you go along... Uh, Catherine White on White It's Chan. not a delicacy. <laughs> well, I suppose it's the way you look at it, you see. Well, um, if, it's, if it depends on looking at it, that proves my point, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I think in most people it is not considered a delicacy, and there are 42 seconds left for you with custard pies starting now. The great thing about custard pies is to distinguish between an eating pie and a throwing pie. Uh, Derek Nimmo's challenge. The subject is pies, not pies. A repetition because she said pie twice. Yes, it is custard pies. It says in a throwing pie and an eating pie. So I think that's legitimate. That makes two pies in all, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's a good point, isn't that's it? That's the subject. Yes, all right. We'll leave it with you, Catherine Whitehorn. You have another point. And there are 36 seconds left for custard pies starting now. You make them with entirely different things according to which you wish to do with them. Uh, Clement Freud. The two witches. No, <laughs> which you wish... I mean, it sounded from here as if you were saying exactly the same thing twice. Well, actually, Clement, oh, I, I think... it's all too awful. They're so rude. And <laughs> this lady coming here for the first time. That... You're taking a rise like that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Clement, if you'd had her for hesitation, which it sounded like to me, I would have agreed. Yes, as that, said, I was witch and that. witch. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, uh, I disagree with the challenge because it was not um, deviation. Yes. So uh, Catherine right gets another point, and there are 32 <laughs> seconds left for custard pies, Catherine, starting now. If you want uh, Derek to... Nemo challenged. Oh, well, it's not much good, is it, really? But I was, to... <laughs> I was going to say hesitation, but I felt realised she hadn't got into her stride. So I... <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be fair to say she has got into her Wait, stride now. She's working action. truly in her stride and doing extraordinarily well. So it was a hesitation. She didn't get going in time. So, Derek, you'll well, get a point. Oh, well, you take the subject back. <laughs> 30 seconds left for custard pies starting now. When he picks one up and he throws it up in the air and it lands in his own face. And I always laugh at that, don't you? I do think that if you go along to the playroom and that little fellow's there with a little hat and baggy trousers. Uh, Catherine Whitehall. Little twice. Yes, the little twice. Oh, well, yes, listen, absolutely. Catherine, you have another point. Well, jolly you good. take over the subject. <laughs> Riding away now. <laughs> <laughs> Stride, isn't she? Oh, yeah. really Custard pies is back with you, Catherine, and there are 18 seconds left starting now. The point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Catherine, judge. you must come in. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid it was. You, mm -hmm. I've got to be firm with you now because yes. you were in the lead for a second. You've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Clement, I agree with the challenge. You take over the subject, custard pies, and there are 17 seconds left starting now. It's absolutely essential to use pastry for this, although it matters uh, not. Kenneth Williams, why is it... Uh, Deviation. We've already had him on culinary effects for the rest of the after programme, and we don't want to start another load of stuff out of it. <laughs> what so why are you challenging? How much electricity is leaking out of his tube? <laughs> <laughs> Out of his well, that's what he went on about it leaking out, he said. <laughs> Loads of rubbish. I know that was. I don't know why he wasn't challenged on that. Well, I meant to leak. challenge him at the time, Nick, when I was carried away. <laughs> you were throbbing, in yeah. other words. Well, what are you challenging about now? Ah, uh, boring, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid in this game he can be as boring as he likes as long as he keeps going and doesn't hesitate, repeat or, or, um, or deviate. He, he, um, it doesn't matter. So he gains another point because I can't agree with the challenge. And there are 14 seconds left for custard pies, Clement, starting now. One of the best things about custard pies is that it doesn't make a repeat, unlike radishes, which have often been said to have this quality. You use eggs and milk and sugar and you bake 
blind in an oven. Flour. <laughs> Speaking again, when the whistle went at the end of that round, increased his lead. And I see, I'm afraid it is time for us to finish because we have no more time. So let me give you the final score. Kenneth Williams, unlike him, trailed a little this week in fourth place. Catherine Whitehorn, for the first time, did extraordinarily well because she came a very good third. Only two points behind Derek Nimmo, who was three points behind this week's winner, Clement Freud. <laughs> all we have time for. We do hope you've enjoyed this particular edition of Just a Minute and from all of us here, goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch. Present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud, and Prunella Scales in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And I'm pleased to welcome back to the show, most courageously, Prunella Scales. She's come once again to try and pit her wits against these three devastating, passionate players. Oh, and the sign no. <laughs> players of the game. Anyway, well, good luck, uh, Prunella. I'm sure you're going to do jolly well. And once again, I'm going to ask them each to speak on some unlikely subject that they can without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject. And according to how well they do it, they will gain points. And of course, they're challenged, and I, dis I agree with the challenge. They will not gain points. That is how we play. That is how we score. And Clement Freud, will you begin? And can you start this week on astronomy? 60 seconds now. Ideally, to study and practice astronomy, you need a duck. Clarence Williams, you've challenged very rapidly. Why? A deviation. You cannot ideally study anything, let alone astronomy. It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think you ideally can do something. Well, I mean, well, you wouldn't be a human being, would you? Would you? Should be ideal. No human being is. So I rubbish. know, but it's according to your. <laughs> It's according to your interpretation of the word. And some people's feelings may be that what they're doing is an ideal way of doing something. And so I disagree with the challenge, so Clement Freud gets it, <laughs> and he keeps the subject of astronomy. 55 seconds left, starting now. A dark night, and many is the occasion on which I have nudged the housekeeper and taken out my telescope and said, oh ho, there uh, is sat. There again, challenge. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I oh, thought he said, oh, oh, but he didn't. He said, oh, ho. He said, ho, ho, didn't you? I, repetition, I wasn't going to, but I wasn't... Oh, no. ho, he was being very clever, setting himself up for as a target, and, uh, well, what did you say, actually, Clement? Oh, ho. Oh, yes. Quite distinctly, without any ulterior motive. Yeah, actually, the chairman did think as I did, you see. So I did think as I Now it comes into the song, oh, ho, oh, ho, his nose doth show how off the black jack to his lips doth go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What do you think? I, don't I suppose it... we better get on, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yes, but we enjoyed it anyway. Yeah. Clement, you keep the subject. 47 seconds left for astronomy starting now. There is the plough, say I. It's the pluff, responds the woman. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Very new challenge. I suspect it wasn't Yo-Ho in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Your suspicions are correct. It was absolutely correct. Um, so, two no's. Again, you appoint Derek. You take over the subject, and there are 40 seconds left. Astronomy starting now. My favourite place to study astronomy is standing on top of the Wallace Memorial outside Stirling. There I look up into the night at Orion's belt. 
three beautiful stars gleaming and I know that only the fiery smoke of a thousand years that came before the birth of time. Uh, um, Prunella Scales, you have challenged. What? Deviation, it's a science. He's getting all romantic he, about it. He's getting romantic, but you said a romance and a science. Astronomy is a science. You yes, can't I know. Talk about a science like that. Oh, I, I think you can be romantic oh. about anything, really, oh. Prunella. It was jolly oh, well, well tried, but I'm go. afraid I do feel that he wasn't, strictly speaking, deviating from astronomy. So, however romantic he wants to get about it, so he gains another point, and there are eight seconds left. Astronomy, Derek, starting now. Because one has a rather jolly shape, like a pan, and I always liked looking at that one when I was seven and a half. My mummy used to show it to me and say. <laughs> Just to remind you that that whistle, which is so beautifully blown by Ian Messiter, tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Derek Nimmo, who has a lead of one over Clement Freud at the end of the first round. Kenneth, will you begin the next round? Something that you've given plenty of in this no, particular game. <laughs> passion. <laughs> so can you give us some more passion, or at least talk about passion, for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, as St. Simeon passionately declared, all that we know of a man is his reputation, and as to his character, madam, only the all-knowing can be aware of that. How true this is, and with what motivation this so thrills the human frame that you might define the entire feeling as passion, and I possess it to a degree of intensity. <laughs> Even now, I'm throbbing with it. People have actually said, look at him, he's fascinating. He's going, he is, he's passionate. Penelope Scales, you've challenged why? Repetition, he's going, he is. Yes, he is, he is. It was uh, very... No, I said he's going, he is. Uh, that's oh, not repetition, that's pardon. he is one minute, and it's he is the next... Oh, let the audience be the judge. They're absolutely fair, always, the audience are. Green Don't people. ask them! I am going to ask them! <laughs> no, because because you're quite you, right, you you're the chairman, we will abide. <laughs> Well, you will abide by your decision, my friend. No, you have challenged my decision, so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if you agree with Prunella's challenge, would you cheer? And if you disagree, would you boo? And you all do it together now. <laughs> Just decided. <laughs> all right. So the audience have decided it, and there are um, 14 seconds left for you, Prunella, on passion starting now. Passion is totally foreign to the English mentality. The French understand it... Uh, Derek Nimmo, why have you challenged? Well, it's not foreign to my mentality, says D.B. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. It is not foreign to the English mentality. They may be less passionate than some races, but it's well, not she's foreign. speaking in a general sense, and she's quite right. We are not as passionate as... <laughs> <laughs> you just said you were frobbing with it. Yes. <laughs> oh, but I am not English, my it's darling. Welsh. I am Welsh, you see. Welsh. Come and see, come and be, come and ambitious, you see. Anyway, I agree with Derek's challenge, and he takes the subject of passion. There are nine seconds left, Derek, starting now. I have tremendous passion for butterfly collecting, and I go out with a lovely net on green meadows. Um, fill in the scales. Why this is chance? exactly what I meant. He can have a passion for butterfly collecting. Yes. But this is what I meant about it being foreign to the English temperament. I don't think you established that. Deviation to have no, a I mean, you can have that collecting. But you, yes, well, I mean, it is still passion. That is the subject on the card. He's not, strictly speaking, deviated from it, however much you think it may be devious to have a passion for butterflies. So, so the, pa the passion is still with you, Derek, and there are three seconds left starting now. I have a passion for nubile women with big thighs. <laughs> and I... <laughs> Prunella, can I ask you, did Derek's last thought... Oh, uh, yes, that was exactly what I meant. Oh, good. <laughs> well, there we are. But uh, Derek has increased his lead at the end of that round over all the others. And, Prunella, it's your turn to begin. The subject is why I want to play Lady Macbeth. Mm. I don't know whether you have ever felt you wanted to play it, but anyway, can you talk about it for 60 seconds, starting now? I have never played Lady Macbeth, but I've always wanted to because I think I'm absolutely ideal casting for it. When I was very young, I was convinced that I would grow up tall and dark and gaunt and ecstatically beautiful. I also thought I would grow up to be a man, but that didn't happen uh, either. Derek Nimmer's challenge, why? Revolution of grow-up. Yes, oh, um, yes, that is right. So, Derek, you gain a point and you take over this subject. Why I want to play <laughs> Lady Macbeth. 
Can you tell us why? Uh, and there are 44 seconds left starting now. I want to play Lady Macbeth because when I was a child, I always thought that I would grow up to be gaunt and beautiful. And <laughs> uh, Kenneth Williams, why have you We've well, had all this before, we don't know. <laughs> but I'm afraid you haven't had it from Derek. So therefore, he gains another point for that. So he can say it the, uh, for the first time. 37 seconds left, Derek. Why I want to play Lady Macbeth starting now? It's going to be absolutely lovely to romp around. There's great long roads with blood all over your hands. <laughs> Deviation, nobody ever played Lady Macbeth would romp around. <laughs> you haven't seen some of the people who played Lady Macbeth, obviously. She's not a romper. You can't, in a, a, any sense. A thunderer, but not yes. a romper. All right, you, well, I, mean, I not know you're deviating no. from the subject. No, you're well in the lead. I, I, it's, it's a questionable point of whether you're deviating from the subject or not, but I think there is some justification for the challenge, so I give it to you, Kenneth. Thank you. And there are 34 seconds left for why I want to play Lady Macbeth starting now. Why I want to play Lady Macbeth is because that's what Shakespeare wrote it for in the beginning. Ah, oh boy, and what more lovely specimen than what you see before you <laughs> now. <laughs> if I got up on the stage... Deviation. Why? Well, it's not a boy, he's a dirty old man. <laughs> It's obviously disagree, in spite of how young you look. They entirely disagree with Derek's challenge. But uh, obviously... Put it well, all right, I'll tell you what, and we'll put it to the audience. Do you agree with Derek's challenge, ladies and gentlemen? If you do, will you cheer? And if you disagree, will you boo? And you all do it together now. An absolute draw, so there we are. <laughs> Kenneth keeps the subject, no points scored, and there are 21 seconds left for why I want to play Lady Macbeth, Kenneth, starting now. And because I would say most beautifully, and Duncan's guard <laughs> will I with Wassail. Um, uh, Prilio Scales, why Hesitation. Oh, what are you talking about? Not <laughs> quite. He got very close to it. I didn't quite know what he was talking about, but it didn't <laughs> was hesitation. So Kenneth gets a point, and there are 17 seconds left for why I want to play Lady Macbeth starting now. And memory, the ward of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. Ah, what dialogue is there for a fine <laughs> Kenneth, were you quoting from Macbeth? Yes, she says, Duncan's guards will lie with wine and wassail, so convinced ah. that memory of the water of the range will be a few with the receipt of reason in Limbeck. <laughs> if you'd said it like that, we would have understood. Ah. <laughs> there we are. So, um, Lady Macbeth uh, gives you some points, Kenneth, and you have jumped ahead of Clement Freud at the end of that round. <laughs> Clement, will you begin the next round? The subject is smoking in the kitchen. Yes, that makes you think, doesn't it? But uh, can you talk to us about it for 60 seconds, starting now? When you see smoking in the kitchen, <clears throat> it's fairly obvious that something is burning. <laughs> and depending on what you have, what saucepans are on the stove, what joints are in the oven... Uh, Derek, name a wife who challenged. Rotation of what? What sauce? What? Yes, but it's a bit unfair, isn't it? What? Oh, well, I know, but if you challenge, I must be fair, it is quite correct. So, therefore, Derek, you take over the subject with another point, and there are 47 seconds left for smoking in the kitchen starting now. Smoking in the kitchen is particularly pleasant if you're lying on the floor with a large cigarette holder in your hand. Uh, Clement Freud, why have you challenged? Repetition of in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'm going to give it back to Clement and we're not going to start challenging any more after this on these small words because otherwise the game will run to a grinding halt. So, Clement, you get the subject back and there are 42 seconds left for smoking in the kitchen starting now. In what in kitchen can you smoke? You may well ask. What in the <laughs> heaven's name? Uh, Derek, no more you uh, hesitate. Hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Utterly <does it. laughs> Having been generous to him and given him the subject back, he thought he'd be very clever and try and get in as many what's and ins and ands as he could, and he hesitated. So, Derek, you get a point. The subject back, 33 seconds left. Smoking in the kitchen, starting now. Smoking in the kitchen, I see. Call for the fire brigade, I shout. And the brigade arrives. In come those splendid men in their lovely uniforms with their big choppers in their hands. They smash down the door, open everything up to the wide world, and squirt away with their hoses. Water goes right over the flames, and everything begins to subside and drop gently down until once more that lovely place where the food is cooked is cool and dry again. <laughs> 
and everyone is happy. <laughs> Well, there is this Stephen once again when the whistle went, so he gains a further point, increasing his lead at the end. In fact, he's now way out in the lead, and the other three are almost equal in second place. And by the way, there's a lovely sort of devious thought you had there, Derek. You said they broke, uh, they, they came in, and then they broke the door down. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously... Yes, my got... goodness, you're quite right, Nick. <laughs> Derek, it's your turn good to begin Good thing you're not again. all as sharp as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good thing we're not all as sarcastic <laughs> as you, Derek, isn't it? <laughs> Reading under the bedclothes is the subject that Ian Mester sought for you, Derek, so can you talk to us about it starting now? Well, the particular kind of bedclothes that I like to read under are an accumulation of nighties. I hang them up above my head and then I snuggle down below them with a tiny lighted candle and a book... Uh, Kenneth and his wife were challenged. The aviation, he wouldn't be under there with a lighted candle, he would burn himself to death. <laughs> Yeah, you see, the awful thing is that, that probably you're absolutely correct in that sense if you burn himself to death, it would, would, uh, he couldn't be reading under the bedclothes. But in talking about it, he's not actually deviating from the subject on the card. He's getting to smoking in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so, while it, it's pretty close, I'm afraid I must be accurate about the subject on the card, which is reading under the bedclothes, which he was describing. And uh, there are 45 seconds left for you, Derek, starting now. Another variety of this particular pastime, of course, can be obtained if you get into your actual bed with sheets and blankets and perhaps an eider down above you and an electric torch in your hand. And there you can open a copy of Samuel P. Uh, Kenneth Williams, your chap. Yes, hesitation. Hesitation, I quite agree. Mm. Yes, he wasn't sure what he was going to open out of this big so so <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth. You have the subject, and you have... What is it, subject? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just about to give it to you. 29 seconds verse, though, reading under the bedclothes, starting now. Well, this isn't something I do very often, but I have, I recall, one occasion down at where I was particularly frightened. And I was frightened. Uh, Clement Freud challenge. The repetition of frightened. <laughs> you see, it so you take over the subject, and there are 18 seconds left. Reading under the bedclothes, starting now. Of course, you have to have bedclothes and a book, otherwise the whole idea of this pastime... Uh, is Kenneth, why have you chance? Deviation has already been established. We're just going to go all around all these bedclothes we've gone through until they're all rotten with... Clothes. I haven't seen Clement Roy's bedclothes. <laughs> no, he hasn't had the subject before, and he's starting again talking about the bedclothes and uh, the other necessary things to have oh. for reading. So I'm afraid I, he wasn't deviating from the subject. He keeps it. There are 13 seconds left, starting now. A Thousand and One Nights would be a very suitable volume for reading under the... Um, Derek Nimmer, why Sorry, the challenge? my mistake. Just give him, him a point. Reading, <laughs> I, but the reading is part of the card. Repetition, I was going to say. Repetition of reading, but reading is part of the card. You've taken your challenge back. I've never quite established if someone challenges it incorrectly whether the person gets a point. I suppose he should, strictly sure, speaking. Yeah. So he, Clement gets another point and there are eight seconds left for reading under the bedclothes starting now. The chief defect of Henry King was chewing little bits of string. Oh. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why have you chucked? Well, he recites his wretched poem on every programme. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing could be more repetitive. The chief defects of Henry King. Every time we get anything, he doesn't know what to say. He fills in the gap. It's not in a thousand and one nights. It's the only thing, you know. It's very boring. It was pretty boring three years ago. Yes, you the first time. Uh, Prunella, you haven't said anything. Would you like to say something as well? They've all had a, about Henry King. Anything at all you feel about it? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, the thing is, all you've done now, you know, Derek, is the fact you've drawn Clement's attention to bring it out. He'll bring it out even more. He'll bring it into smoking in the kitchen and everything. <laughs> uh, what were you challenging for after your long dissertation? Well, the repetition of the chief of England. <laughs> what will Henry King do? Uh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he could read that under his bedclothes, so it's not, strictly speaking, deviating no, no, from the subject on no, the card. No, no, so, no. he has another point, and there are four seconds left, starting now. God made the evil grocer as a portent and a sign. Uh, Kenneth Williams, wife of Oh, it's nothing to do with reading under He's just doing these quotes. It's nothing to do with reading but This is, as bed. I understand it, what he was reading under the bedclothes. So he has one other point, one second left, starting... He did say he was reading A Thousand One Night, didn't he? No. Well, he might have a lot of books under the bedclothes. <laughs> <laughs> a library. <laughs> but are you challenged? Why? He misquoted. What did he miss? God made the wicked grocer for a mystery and sign. Ah! Very good. Very good. Ah! That was the point. That was the 
As a free country, and she got up and she affirmed her freedom. Maybe <laughs> you can't be misquoting, can you? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, if Jeff, I must point out some of the right. audience are leaving. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, leave. <laughs> I hope your train goes. <laughs> I must point out to the listeners that somebody really has left. We hope it's for a train. And um, <laughs> No, she's living. Prunella's got a point, and there's one second left for you, Prunella, exactly. with yeah. reading under the play clothes, starting now. One of the reasons I'm not... A- <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, Prunella scales to speak of them with the whistle winch. She gains very rapidly two points there, and she's now still in third place behind Clement Freud, and Derek's still very definitely the leader. Kenneth, will you begin the next round? My <laughs> fancy... <laughs> Can you tell us what your I say, I've chosen stinking subjects for me, haven't I? I, I'm inclined to agree. You've had some stinking subjects they this week, aren't you? So anyway, now we'd like you to talk about my fancy starting now. My fancy is this particular poem, which runs white as a white <laughs> sail on a dusky sea, when half the horizon's clouded and half free, fluttering between... Oh, I said half free. <laughs> <laughs> going, even if you do. They might even be generous, even if they notice it. Yeah, Clement not Freud. with these faces round here. Clement's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, challenge came first. The repetition of white. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone right back to when you said white, white, right at the beginning. Sorry. So, you know, um, there are 46 seconds left for you, Clement. My fancy is starting now. My fancy is Prunella Scales <laughs> of the rumpustuous breast, the lugubrious... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming here to listen to a load of filth. <laughs> Show, isn't it? But look how she's gone white. <laughs> she was white. Right. And yes, then somebody else has already left. And... <laughs> and also, her husband is sitting in the audience. As yes, well. her husband's sitting <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> so I agree with Kenneth Williams' challenge. We'll get straight on with the I game. I wouldn't describe it. I'm not <laughs> going to be drawn quiet. any further. And uh, say <laughs> there are 40 seconds left for Kenneth Williams on My Fancy starting now. My Fancy is generally for precision and neatness. I have been referred to as compact. And I think <laughs> you will all agree that that verdict is not mispronounced. <laughs> and lean down and give the wee green man a bowl of milk. <laughs> That's my fancy this week. And I'll put two bob each way on Lady Bluebell. <laughs> and hope to win the national sweepstake at some future date. But of course my fancy could go for Angelica and silver balls on top. <laughs> All I can say, Kenneth, is fancy that. <laughs> but uh, your fancy managed to bring you well back from the fourth position to a very definite third position, but still Derek Nemo's in the lead. Um, Prunella, will you begin the next round? The subject is magic. Can you talk to us about that for 60 seconds, starting now? After a particularly virulent row last week with my husband, he said, Darling, where's the magic? And I realised... Uh, Derek, never wife who challenged. Hesitation. I beg your pardon? Hesitation. I disagree. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Prunella has another point, and there are 57 seconds left for magic Prunella starting now. And I realised that indeed I hadn't... Uh, Derek, never you challenge. Repetition of real life. Yes, I know. It's oh. rotten, because when she has to start again, she's not very experienced in the game, oh. she starts off with a phrase that she left off with. I didn't you couldn't. You, Sorry. No, Sorry. Well, I'm afraid you can't, Prunella, so I no, have to no. stick to the rules. So Derek gets a point. 56 seconds for magic. Derek starting now. Marlin was a great practitioner of this art, and how I like going to the cinema or reading children's books and learning about this remarkable man who joined up with Arthur and his old round table and all those lovely nights. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why have you challenged? Deviation. Merlin did not join up with Arthur at all. What happened to him? <laughs> because he didn't join up with him. I mean, he, he discovered him. He didn't join up with him. No, he, he, he wasn't he's, in, he's, the, in the sense, that sense, yes, join up. The description wasn't even in the no. Exactly. <laughs> no, he, he, he just associated himself with him. He discovered he? him in the box. Yes, there we are. Floating. Kenneth, all right, you have the point and the subject. 39 mm. seconds for magic starting now. Indeed, it was put to me quite recently that only this degree in any kind of belief holds, so to speak, the imperative. As long as people believe, shall we say, in the nature of a miracle. Uh, uh, Prunella Scales, you challenge, why? 
Well, deviation, he hasn't mentioned magic yet. He hasn't I mentioned magic. He's trying to describe it, but it's sounding very devious, I must say. <laughs> I said it's this element in a belief which makes it imperative. Oh, I see. Well, which all right. anyone too, would yes. realise oh. meant magic. Yeah, no, we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> It is uh, Kenneth's interpretation of magic, which we will accept. Therefore, Kenneth, you keep the subject, and there are 21 seconds left starting now. A lot of people would say it's almost magical, the experience I have when I contemplate the infinite. Oh, I feel a sudden emotion, and it would seem that an act of magic is taking place. This occurs when I walk on in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Kenneth's uh, strange and uh, perhaps to some people devious idea of magic, but he's entitled to his own interpretation of the word, so he kept the subject, he gained an extra point for speaking when the whistle went, and, and I won. <laughs> Not quite, Kenneth, no. Well, who's won? Well, I'll tell you who's won now, because I'm afraid we have no more time for this particular game. Prunella Scales, coming back to the game after a long absence, did jolly well. She got a lot of points, and she was just in fourth place, but you were all quite a way behind this week's winner, Derek Nimmer. <laughs> you have enjoyed this uh, particular edition of Just a Minute. From all of us here, goodbye. <laughs> the chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch. Present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud, and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute was fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And as you've just heard, we are delighted in this particular show to welcome back the one and only Sheila Hancock. Here, 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 here. <laughs> With great courage and determination, she has returned to do battle against these three extraordinary, exceptional, <laughs> oh, extroverts that. That and extravagant players <laughs> of Just a Minute. And once more, I'm going to ask Unusual. them all to speak, if they can, for just a minute on some unlikely subject, without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject. And according to how well they do this, they will gain points, or their opponents will gain points. And let us begin the show this week with the lovely <coughs> Sheila Hancock. Sheila, can you talk to us about modern art for 60 seconds, starting now? I knew this fella called Art, and he was extremely modern. He was, in fact, a hippie, and his ways were extremely up-to-date in every sense of the word. He had long hair, he wore a caftan, he had attitudes towards work that were, if not revolutionary, then new. He also enjoyed pictures, which is another meaning of the word modern art. Now, this is something that I don't like to pass comment on, because in previous generations, art that was considered modern was always spurned and mocked, and later it was acclaimed as a masterpiece. So I wouldn't venture to pass an opinion now. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Why? Well, deviation, if she don't want to pass an opinion, why don't she shut up? <laughs> Because, Kenneth, whether she wishes to pass an opinion or not, in this game she has to keep going for 60 seconds, <laughs> irrespective of... Uh, so I disagree with your challenge, and Sheila therefore gains a point, and there are 23 seconds for you, Sheila, to continue with modern art starting now. Several weeks ago, I went to the Tate Gallery to see an exhibition with a very intellectual friend of mine, and I was very wary about... A uh, Derek Nimmo, why have you challenged? Repetition of friend. She had a friend called Art. 
That's right, she did. Right. It was a different friend. It was a different friend. <laughs> it might have been a different friend, but it was a repetition of the word friend. Oh. So, on this occasion, I agree with Derek Nimmo. Uh, repetition. Derek gains a point. He takes over the subject. Fifteen seconds left. Modern art, starting now. King Francis Bacon is probably my favourite modern artist. I particularly like those lovely series of pictures he did about the Pope. And some of the ones which show the carcasses of meat torn open in the retrospective gar- exhibition. Uh, Sheila Hancock, you've challenged. Hesitation. Her. Yes, yes. He was going so fast he tripped over himself, but that is a hesitation. So, Sheila, you'll gain another point, and there are four seconds left for you to continue yet again with modern art starting now. In this gallery was a rope. Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. Why? Repetition of gallery. Yes, you went to the Tate Gallery before. Huh. So you say gallery. <laughs> He's up to his old tricks. Yes, well, he's got it down to a, a fine art, but it was a legitimate challenge. So Not very modern, modern though. Uh, Clement Freud, <laughs> you gain a point and you take over the subject with two seconds to go. Modern art starting now. A puce lemon suspended from... A... <laughs> whistle, by the way, tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. On this occasion it was Clement Freud, so he's now in the lead, equal with Sheila Hancock at the end of that round. Derek Nimmo, will you begin the next round? The subject is combinations. (laughs) I think you brought them in more than once in the series of Just a Minute, but will you talk about them now for 60 seconds starting now? I like combinations, really. It's a very nice word. It can be used in all sorts of ways, really, particularly relating to other letters of the alphabet, if you jumble them all together, I think it's terribly interesting. Also, of course, if you are a locksmith, it's terribly important to know the right combination, because if you think it's A, B, C, D, E, and in fact, it is L, M, N, O, P, Q, you're not going to get anywhere at all, are you? I mean, that's quite obvious. <laughs> think about it. And then there are the woolen ones, which that chairman fellow was talking about a moment ago. Well, there you cover yourself all in them. They're a one-piece garment, very nice to wear, particularly on the chilly mornings. I remember going to see A. Matthews just before he died, and he was sitting in his garden wearing combinations which fastened with a safety pin here and his dear stalker hat on. And he's very old, nearly 90 years. And he picked my daughter up in his arms and he looked at her and he said, I'm not going to see you when you go older, my dear. And tears came into his eyes. And I think that was the most wonderful and moving moment because he... Uh, Sheila Hancock, you challenge. Why? Deviation. I agree it's a moving moment, but I don't honestly see it's anything to do with his combinations. I quite agree, <laughs> Sheila. He had got <laughs> the audience completely hoodwinked by this beautiful but sentimental story. And so you had the courage to challenge, and therefore I agree with the challenge. It's got nothing to do with his combinations. It is four and a half seconds for you, Sheila, to continue with combinations starting now. When I was little, I wore either liberty bodices or combinations, but there were certain... Sheila Hancock was speaking when the whistle went, so she gains that extra point. In fact, she was the only one to score in that round, so she now has a lead of two over everybody, over Clement Freud and everybody else at the end of they that. They must be tired. They must be waning, yes, mustn't yes, they? Yes, yes, <laughs> they, yes. They've been intimidated by a, a really good player of the game, Sheila Hancock. Clement Freud, it is your turn to begin. Dick Turpin. Can you talk to us about Dick Turpin, Clement, for 60 seconds, starting now? It would be an absurd understatement to say that Dick Turpin was a horseman who enjoyed riding at night. He was, in fact, a highwayman of the most callous and vicious nature who held up women and children, and many thought that he robbed the rich to give to the poor, which is quite untrue, because that's the sort of thing Kenneth Williams did. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, why you... I'm not going to sit here and listen to a load of milk. <laughs> So, lying in me, I've so, done nothing of the kind. I've not robbed anybody, have I? No, you've never robbed the rich to give to the poor. Kids. No. I quite agree. I'm sure you haven't, and I take your word deviation. for that. So, it's deviation, great. I give you a point, and there are 34 seconds left for Dick Turpin starting now. Well, he rode up to these coaches, you see, which was full of rich people, and... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged you. Deviation. Why? The coaches was full. <laughs> A devious... It may be a dirty show, but I like clean grammar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I maintain that in a show like this, we have to keep going under such difficult obstacles and the stress and the strain of three people trying to challenge you. You might not always use very good grammar, and therefore I'm not going to allow it and say that Kenneth has another point, and there are 29 seconds left for Dick Turpin. 
Kenneth, starting now. And he said, money or your life, you see. Well, a lot of them came out of the coach and gave... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged you again. Coach, coach. Repetition. That's right, we've had the coach before. So, Clement, that was correct, a repetition. <laughs> and there are 24 seconds for you, Clement, to continue with Dick Turpin starting now. He had a horse which was black, called Huntercoom, although many people referred to it as Black Bess. Uh, Derek Nimmo has challenged Additional you. black. Uh, you did say black twice, so uh, Derek gets a point. small B, yes. and Black Bess is the name of the animal. Really? Well done. Well done. <laughs> Well done. That applies to my Tate gallery and my gallery. Well, yes, of course, course it does. my darling. Of and course. it applies to so many things. We can go on, things, we can go on forever. I'm sure all the audience can bring examples of such things up to us, but we, we don't could wish them. canonical law. <laughs> <laughs> so, Derek has a point, and there are 16 seconds left for Dick Turpin, Derek, starting now. Dick Turpin had a friend who was also a Dick Shepherd. They have been moulded into two most beautiful stature figures, and I have a pair of them at home, which I treasure very greatly. One looks to the left, the other... Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Deviation. We're no longer discussing Dick Turpin. We're discussing statues. <laughs> yes, but you did establish, you know, that he has two statute figures uh, made in the likeness of Dick Turpin. Isn't that not right? Yes, absolutely Exactly. Right, yes. So I'm afraid I can't allow it. So Derek has another point, and there are four seconds... But no, wait a minute. The subject is Dick Turpin, not statues of Dick Turpin. <laughs> 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 we are not going to get into a discussion or argument about that. Dick, Derek has a point, and there are four seconds left, starting now. And when he rode down from York, he came to tremendous lick, and everybody said, What hell? I'm there! I'm there! That's one way, if there's only four seconds to go, to make sure you don't get uh, challenged in the last four seconds, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, after that round, Dick Turpin has taken Derek into the lead. He's now leading Sheila Hancock and Kenneth Williams by two, and Clement is trailing them by one. Oh, Sheila yeah. Hancock, it's your turn to begin. Politics. Ooh. There are so many of them, and we get plenty of them in this show, and of one nature. But will you talk on the subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Somebody said to me the other day that I was apolitical, and I considered that, that was a great compliment. I used to be very politically committed, but as time has grown on and technical age has advanced, I have decided that politics perhaps doesn't have the answer to all our problems. We have two parties of opposite ends. One takes care of the rich, and one takes care of the poor. The Kenneth Williams has challenged. Deviation, nothing of the kind. Well, I... <laughs> I mean, this is an attempt to drive a rift right down the middle of this country. I'm not going to stand idly by and hear this kind of awful propaganda put out by a young woman who's oh, too young, you. incidentally, to know her own mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've said quite yet. enough. You've said quite enough. I mean, you're going off about politics yourself. Now, save it for the subject because you've got it because I heartily agree that one party is not looking after the rich and the other well, after the poor. Do you want you me to give you that. evidence? I, I can give you evidence of both sides who look after the rich both on the left and the right and in both on the fact, right and the left who sometimes look after the poor. In actual fact I did say I was apolitical because that's what I used to believe. But you definitely and established that one of our further. major parties looks after the poor and the other one only looks after the rich which I would say is untrue. They both they have a bias one with the other but they don't entirely side with one or the other. Kenneth I agree with you you gain a point and there are 40 seconds for politics starting now. Well of course we have a wonderful system in this country which has been largely vouchsafed to us by by the efforts of that dreadful man, Oliver Cromwell. Because <laughs> the facts are he was, in essence, a parliamentarian. It is a bitter tragedy. Uh, Clement <laughs> Roy, why do you challenge? <laughs> yes, no, he very cleverly no. changed from one word to another in midstream. Ah, he yeah. did not exactly hesitate. No. He was teetering, That's but right. he didn't quite hesitate. <laughs> so I'm with Kenneth. He gains another point as I disagree with the challenge. Mm. And there are 18 <laughs> seconds left. Politics starting now. The only sadness is in that he had so painfully to dispose of that wonderful man, the martyr. Charles, who on the scaffold said to the bishop, Jackson it was, I uh, go... Uh, Derek Nimmo, why do you... Deviation, we're not talking about politics, we're talking about regicide. <laughs> why do you no, this is it's definitely not politics, and I can't think of speech boy, of Charles the first half part of the development And now, uh, Kenneth, I'm on your side, so keep quiet a second. No. <laughs> I can't think of a more powerful political situation than Oliver Cromwell, who 
decided on, and managed to... Charles I on the scaffold. Charles I on yes. the scaffold, the King of England being beheaded, which was organised by Cromwell and his parliamentarians. What more political situation, what more dynamically political situation could you have in this oh, country? Oh, Lord, this is turning into a history lesson, isn't it? <laughs> well, all right. Kenneth, you have a point, and there are four seconds left for politics starting now. And, of course, with the... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. He said, and, of course, twice before... Well, you have actually said, and of course, if you'd only said it once before, I oh, wouldn't have lied. But you have on this occasion said <laughs> oh, twice. So, yes. uh, Clement, this time you gain a point, and there are two seconds left for politics starting now. The Liberals are very sadly <laughs> underrated. <laughs> rather sad that with two seconds to go, Clement could only mention the Liberals in two seconds, which is a, a rather I sad... I would have spoken about them for a minute. I'm sure you I would have done those eloquently, my dear. <laughs> I say it's sad there was only two seconds left for you to do it, and I hope people don't take that as a comment on their potency in politics. Oh, listen! There we are. Oh, Kenneth oh, Williams, oh. you have leapt into the lead. Oh, I love <laughs> Derek Nimmo, will you begin the next round? The subject is Drake's. Who? Drake's. That's all that's on the card. Sorry, Drake. You obviously want a moment to think no, about it. There's many interpretations drink, which you always love. So, Derek Nimmo, Drake's, 60 seconds, starting now. This is a splendid surname in this country. We are proud of the many Drake's who have gone out and done such wonderful things for this country. And when the drum belonging a to Clement the Drake... Clement challenge. Repetition of country. There was a repetition of country, <laughs> I'm afraid. Absolutely so... right. Good old Clay. <laughs> Listens, you've got to give it to him. He listens, doesn't he? Listens. When they think they can't bluff or persuade or bully their way out of it, they become magnanimous and say, Oh, well done. Of course. There was no doubt about it. Clement Floyd, you gain a point, and there are 49 seconds for Drake's starting now. The Liberal Party has a very interesting prompt about Drake's. They don't mind particularly about ducks, and they're prepared to leave signets to the other two... Uh, Derek Nemo's challenge, why? Deviation. I've never heard a more illiberal statement. <laughs> they don't care about the ducks, they only care about the drakes. I am a paid-up member of the Liberal Party, and this is not our party This is not a place for propaganda. What is wrong with this the female of the yeah. species? That's what I want to know. What's wrong here, with here, ducks? Here, why here. don't they care? If it's a Liberal Party, they don't care about the drakes. You want to touch around, mate? You want to touch around, mate? Right, quiet. Now, Sheila, would you like to say something I about totally Drake? I totally agree. I totally agree. What's Absolutely. wrong with the ducks? Nothing's wrong with the ducks, but Clement Freud... Mind you, if they're rich ducks, the, the Tories will I look after them. If they're poor <laughs> ducks, the <laughs> All politicians and all parties are sitting ducks on occasion. Load of rubbish, the whole well, lot of them. The <laughs> and all I can say in trying to be fair, which I always try very hard to do, is this. You can go in this particular game on any subject, as long as it makes sense and it's not technically deviating from the subject, which is Drake's. You can go in your fantasy or imagination or on fact. And Clement yeah. wasn't technically can we hold deviating. You, to that? you can hold me to it. Right, and thank do... you. And there are 39 seconds for Clement to continue with Drake's starting now. Many Devonshire born members of the family of this famous navigator who now play bowls in Plymouth, <laughs> Devonshire. Um, Clement and his wife were challenged. Who now play bowls? Drake well, can't possibly play bowls now, he's dead. <laughs> he did say the descendants, didn't he, or something? What? He did say the descendants. Mm. Members of the family. Well, the Mem members don't of the play family. bowls. They do. People do play bowls still. And I can well believe there are some they descendants. They can't do on that green there, he said they did. He didn't say it was on that particular green. I disagree with the challenge, Kenneth. I'm very sorry. He wasn't deviating from Drake. And there are 31 seconds left for the subject starting now. This is the name of a bakehouse in California. Derek Nimmer's challenge. Revolution of name. Yes, you had the name of Drake's before. Name is quite correct. Uh, Derek, you gain the subject and a point, of course. 28 seconds left, Drake's starting now. Oh, the lovely beginning of the wind and the willows when you all oh, those lovely birds. Clement Freud, wife you challenge. Repetition of lovely. <laughs> yes, I'm <okay. laughs> Well done, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 19 really seconds does. for you, Listen Andres Clement, all. starting yeah. now. <laughs> Edward Lear spoke eloquently on this subject when he mentioned drakes in the wind and ducks on the pond. Villages... Uh, Derek Nimmo's challenge. Repetition of ducks. Yes, we had ducks before. Duck. Mm. No, it's enough. It's well enough. done, Well Derek done. <laughs> well, well listened.
listen. Well, listen, well done. Derek Nimmer has another point of 14 seconds for Drake's Derek, starting now. Henry King is one of the greater of living experiments. Uh, Clement Freud, you've challenged. Hesitation. Yes, it's pretty borderline, wasn't it? He caught his breath, but it, I suppose it was a hesitation. I think it's only fair. I will put this to the audience because it's it's so difficult to judge oh, and really be fair. Him, no, I'm not going to give it to him. I'm going to let the audience decide. If you think there was hesitation, will you cheer? And if you don't think it was, will you boo? Will you all do it together now? <laughs> they don't think it was hesitation. They never think anything. They always boo. No, they did. They did. They usually cheer. <laughs> So Derek Nimmo gains a point and he keeps the subject and there are 11 seconds for Drake's Derek starting now. Another use of the term is the one you... Uh, Kenneth Williams. Hesitation. I agree That's... on the hesitation that time, there was no doubt. Kenneth, you gain a point and there are 8 seconds for Drake's starting now. Well, of course, one of the things they do determine on very early is that the young, webbed feet... <laughs> Well, at the end of that round, we have a very interesting situation. The three men are equal in the lead, and Sheila is trailing just a little, which is sad, but I'm sure it will not be for long. Kenneth, your turn to begin. Knowing my onions. <laughs> Can you talk to us about that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, there is a song in which the lyric says, I'll raise a bunion on his Spanish onion if I catch him bending tonight. <laughs> I think probably that does sum up my attitude to onions. <laughs> the phrase has come largely to mean knowing what you are about apropos style and technique. And this can be said to be the accomplishment of something so finely done that everyone says, how beautifully executed, with what incredible <laughs> panache. I've never seen such a lun as this. He knows his onion. <laughs> No flies on him, even if you can see where they've been. <laughs> but how wonderful it is to be able to see someone. <laughs> well, Kenneth, not only. Put me in the lead, and yes, you oh, can. I'm the lead. <laughs> Wait a minute, Kenneth. They're going to put you further in lead because I think that Kenneth started with the subject and finished with it, so therefore he gets an extra bonus point, doesn't he? Oh, God! Yes. <laughs> Clement, oh, your nice. turn to begin. The subject. Oh, what a lovely one for you. How I grew my beard. <laughs> this seems to have thrown you back on your heels, as they say, but will you talk to us about it for 60 seconds, starting now? I would like to talk to you for 60 seconds on the subject of how I grew my beard which was accomplished by ceasing to shave, or to put it another way, failing to use my razor. Some of you may have it that I suspended all activities with knives and scissors, and those would... Uh, Sheila Hancock, wife of Chan. Deviation, all this activity with knives and scissors, and yes. anyway, I've never suspected... Yes, I'm sure you could never use a knife and a shirt. <laughs> knives and scissors to shave with. Right. You had established in our minds, Clement, mm. that you mm. were shaving. And now you've gone on to talk about shaving and the connection with knives and scissors, so I consider that deviation. And Sheila has the subject, and there are 37 <laughs> seconds left. For you, Sheila, how... <laughs> Starting now. This I consider Sorry. to be Clement a case... Clement Freud, you've challenged. Sorry. Sheila has another point, because Clement challenged to... Uh, he's taking it back. So there we are. The 37 seconds, uh, Sheila, for you. How I grew my beard starting now. It's a case of gross discrimination against women that this subject should have been chosen. It's very obvious that I find it difficult to talk about it. However, I can. When I was very young, I played the part of Dopey in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at school, whereupon, of course, I had to grow a beard. I did my best. I put Vaseline on my chin, <laughs> liquid paraffin, then everything that I'd read in women's magazines would grow beards. However, eventually I resorted to taking a pad of cotton wool and a... Uh, Derek Nimmer, you challenge. Why? Deviation. She's not grown a beard. <laughs> I can't! I can't! She's just been... <laughs> 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 
Well, it's not fair. If you were well, there well, with the lady in the circus. Do I say deviated? Well, it's not me. I was never in a circus. Against cotton wool, did you not? She's a bearded lady. She hasn't yet told us what she did with the cotton wool. Yes, you don't know. No, she said she took a pad of cotton wool. So, Sheila has another point, and there are six seconds left. How I grew my beard, Sheila, starting now. On the cotton wool, I put some... Uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you... Reputation of cotton wool. Oh, you... Now you'll never know. Yes, most ungallant. That's a rotten getting in there. Fancy a girl. I mean, what other girl would have such courage and determination and ability to keep going? How she grew her beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Derek, you've got the subject, How I Grew My Beard, starting now. I went to bed for three and a half months. Uh, Sheila Hancock, why Deviation. Going what? to bed and growing a beard. Yes. It suggests some sort of deviation, doesn't it? It definitely does. <laughs> I mean, to be in bed long enough to grow a beard. <laughs> Two seconds for you, Sheila, on How I Grew My Beard, starting now. I placed Clement my... Clement Freud challenge. Hesitation. No. <laughs> Uh, one and a half seconds for I how I grew my beard. I tell you, he waits until I'm on my last lap, doesn't yes. he? Well, how I grew my beard, Sheila, one and a half seconds, starting now. Hand on my Derek chin. Derek Nemo challenge. Hesitation, of course. No. <laughs> one second for how I grew my beard, Sheila, starting now. Put it on... <laughs> <laughs> I think well, that I'm shows a... great talent to talk for all that time on growing a beard. I think it shows great talent, but I can't give you a bonus point because they almost gave them to you instead. <laughs> but anyway, at the end of that round, I'm afraid it's also the end of the show, so it's up to me now to give you the final score. And a very interesting result. It really was almost equal with all four. But just in fourth place was Clement Freud, one point behind Derek <laughs> Nimmo, who was only one point behind our joint winners, Sheila Hancock and Kenneth Williams. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You might almost say that it was a sort of... Um, a Kenneth might almost have won because I think they were going a little bit overboard with those points that Sheila got at the end and the audience obviously gave her a little bit of assistance. But yes. she is a winner that we love to have because she doesn't play it so often, so the score is equal winners. Congratulations. And it only remains for me Hello. to say to you all now, thank you very much for listening. Thank our audience for coming to enjoy the show. And from all of us here, goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messeter and produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you, thank you very much indeed and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once again, the rules are as before. I'm going to ask each one of them to speak, if they can, on some subject without hesitation, without repetition and without deviating from the subject and according to how well they do it they will gain points or points will be gained by their opponents. Kenneth it's your turn to begin. Thank goodness. The subject <laughs> is 
the snags of show business. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you can tell us very amusing and entertaining snags of show business, but 60 seconds will do, starting now. Well, one of the most obvious that comes to mind is, of course, the occasion when the actor becomes unaware, through some fault or other, of what? the lines are supposed to be. And Siobhan McKenna told me about an over-enthusiastic girl in the prompt corner, perched on a very high stool, who, instead of giving the correct line, just became awfully solicitous and said, Oh, you've gone terribly wrong, darling. <laughs> you should never have done that with a bishop anyway. <laughs> and she fell forward Clement, on the stool. Uh, Clement Freud, I'm afraid, has challenged you. Well, he's an idiot. It's a lovely animal. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, that's really raconteurism at its best. I know. So, Clement Freud, what was your challenge? You should never have done it. What? You should never have done it. Yes, I have to give it to you. And there are 27 seconds left for the snags of show business starting now. So she fell forward off her stool into the prompt corner. <laughs> Uh, Katie Thunes, why did you challenge? This is simply a repetition of what I've just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be and it may not be. You see, it jolly well is and you know it. <laughs> I know, Kenny. I they know, know it here, those people all know it. <laughs> Kenny, I know very well that he's trying to rile you. Yes, taking he's... words out of my mouth and he <laughs> don't know where they've been. <laughs> Trying to get you going so that you will challenge as exactly as you did then and he will gain points. Don't be intimidated. Don't play into his hands oh, on like that. Oh, right. <laughs> would unsettle or unseat you, as we usually say to you, and the result was that you played and challenged right away. And I've got to be accurate, I've got to be fair, and say that I'm afraid he gains another point. And there are 19 seconds, sorry, there are 24 seconds left for the snags of show business, Clemeth, starting now. And this precipitous decline from the seat upon which she was sitting is one of the snags of show business. There are many others, like being in a radio show with Kenneth Williams, who has his right hand on the buzzer and waves his finger across my face in a... Uh, she didn't ignore my wife who challenged. Yes, no, I don't think it's a snag, being in a show with Kenneth Williams. I think it's a... <laughs> Of course, again, I have to be so difficult because I have to be fair. I agree with Derek's challenge. It is not a snag to be in a show with Derek with, uh, Kenneth Williams. It is an honour. Mm. Derek, you gain the point and you take the subject. Eight seconds left. The snags of show business starting now. I was in a show with a very distinguished lady of the theatre who had a throat microphone down her bundles and a little transmitter <laughs> in her knickers. What happened was the elastic break. <laughs> Those of you who may not know, the whistle tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. On this occasion, uh, Derek <laughs> Nimmer was speaking when the whistle went, so he's I crept up. I just fell in what he was on about. <laughs> <laughs> I want to Some... the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> So, some of the audience, if you want to stay after we've recorded the show, audience, we'll tell you the end of that story. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't have time to finish it tonight. Um, Clement, your turn to begin the next round. The subject is models. You can take that many ways, but will you talk about it for just a minute, starting now? Models is the plural of model, and people following this possession, profession. Uh, Derek Nemo, you challenge. Well, I, either he repeats professional, it was deviation because he didn't say the right word. <laughs> either way, I think you're right. Derek, you take over the subject, and there are 50... <laughs> five seconds left for models starting now. I knew a model called Mary who was tall and black and airy. And every day <laughs> she went for a walk... Why? Because this is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, you don't talk about people being tall and black and hairy. That's filthy. <laughs> I don't want to sit here and listen to a I'm load not... of filth. <laughs> I thought this was a family show. It is a family show sometimes. <laughs> but I'm afraid he wasn't deviating from models. I think it's a very devious-sounding model, I must say, tall and black and hairy. Well, but... if she has, of course it is, isn't it? Sounds like she was naked anyway. <laughs> I think, to be fair, he can you should quite... give the subject to me. Thank you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he's got away from the subject of models quite. So I leave it with Derek Nimmer, and there are 45 seconds left starting now. What I really love to do is to go down to the round pond on a Sunday afternoon with my lovely model boat. I put it into the water, and away it sails across that expanse of liquid until it arrives eventually at the other side. And there I go, 
pick it up with my own fair hands, tuck it under my arm, and then go to the kite man, and I have a lovely model flying thing like I've just talked to you about. <laughs> and up you go, fly and float away. Shut up. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You're flying tonight. Uh, you was dropping with it. Yes. <laughs> Hesitation, I agree with you, Clement. So you gain a point, and there are 21 seconds left. Models starting now. If you would care for a Derek Nemo model, all you do is get an <laughs> old sack and put a clerical collar around the top. <laughs> for feet, you use buckled gumboots. And in the way of breeches, what could be better than ecclesiastical sackcloth? Obtained. Um, Derek, remember you've tried the sack. Yes, we've had the sack that you started with, and now we've sack had sackcloth. Well, that's two different words. It's a hyphenated word, so it is a two sack, different isn't ones. it? Can't oh, be yeah, new thought of the game. This is a hyphenated word. Sackcloth, one word. Sackcloth's one word. You know more than I do. Therefore, it's an incorrect challenge. So Clement has a point, and there are two seconds to continue with models. But it's very nasty, anyway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hancock on the other end. Come on, come on, come on, come on. a little nasty and it's a rather um, curious fantasy of if you want to have a Derek Nimmo model but as we established last week you can go in your fantasy or imagination this subject uh, is this game any way you wish. Yeah. Sheila Hancock it's your turn to begin. The worst thing I ever did in my kitchen. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> in 60 seconds starting now. It's difficult for me to talk about this without getting somebody into trouble because the worst thing I ever did in my kitchen involves the milkman. One day, he came to my door, looking very attractive and sweet in his blue and white overall. I said, won't you come in and have a cup of coffee? Which he very willingly did. And as I was handing him the coffee, he dropped his uh, milk Gemma bottles. Freud, why have you challenged? Coffee. The coffee. Oh, we've had we more than oh, one yes. coffee. Now you'll yes. never know what I did with the milkman in the kitchen. <laughs> so perhaps, right. perhaps Clement Freud has saved you some embarrassment. He's used to save the milkman, hasn't he? Clement... You uh, gain a point, and there are 36 seconds left. The worst thing I did in my kitchen, starting now. I put half a pound of toadstools onto the gas cooker, lit the flame beneath it, and added, as requested in the book, 14 ounces of margarine. Uh, Kenneth, why have you challenged? Because no book would give you such a recipe about toadstools. <laughs> This is black magic. It's, it's a clever challenge. They wouldn't actually give a recipe which included toadstools, would they? Yeah, so, Kenneth, yeah. you gain a point and uh, your first one, I'm delighted to say. And there are 24 seconds left. The worst thing I ever did in my yeah. kitchen, yeah. starting now. Well, I made these lovely cheese straws. Uh, Sheila Hancock's challenge. Deviation. To... I've been in Kenneth's kitchen and I'm absolutely sure he's never made a cheese straw in his life. <laughs> Not only is it true, but my mother's here to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> has he? Has he, Mrs. Williams? Oh, I don't Mrs. Think... Williams has saved me the, the trouble of having to decide. She nodded to us, and Kenneth, you have a point, and there are 19 seconds left for the worst thing I ever did in my kitchen, starting now. Taking them out of the oven, I noticed the colour was green. Ho, ho! Kevin uh, <laughs> Freud has challenged you first. Repetition. Of ho. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter. I've got a challenge. <laughs> No, no. Anyway, you see, it turned out that it wasn't flour in the bin at all. It was my father's stomach powder, and that's why they... <laughs> told him ruin all my stories. He ruins everything, didn't he? Yeah. No, you, you had him on a clever challenge of toadstools. He's got you on ho-ho. That so is true. In, a fa in, in effect, that's effect, That's how I try to be fair. I try yes, to keep true. them balanced. That is true. And it's very difficult sometimes. <laughs> so, Clement, you have now 14 seconds to continue with the worst thing I ever did in my kitchen... <laughs> Starting now. Once on a wet September night in the Boltons, I did do the most frightful thing in my kitchen. I forgot to purchase champignons de Paris, which are edible mushrooms, as opposed to the sort of... Again, Clement Freud was speaking when the whistle went, so he gains that extra point. Nick, may yeah. I just say, on behalf of the milkman, that in fact all he did was drop his bottles. <laughs> my, my, my mind boggles at the that thought of what you did to make... Is that on or against the milkman? <laughs> my mind boggles as to what you did to make him drop I his bottles. I just handed him his coffee and he dropped them. He's but his bottles. <laughs> <laughs> but normally.
family of a oh, person... Oh, don't pursue it, Nick. Oh, I'm fascinated, because if you hand a person a cup of coffee and they've got bottles in their hand, if they're composed, they put the bottles on one side. But he looked at Sheila and he dropped his bottles. Well, there we are. Uh, Derek, it's your turn oh. to begin. The subject is diving bells. That is what has been thought up for you, and you have 60 seconds to talk about it starting now. I want some musical comedy called Bell of New York, which is a jolly show, which was first put on in 1884, and there, there was a lovely song called Down at Narragansett, Girls Have Got a Fizz On, and we used to get on, onto the stage, and stand there with these lovely girls in very long swimming things, and they were diving bells. But of course, in the Mediterranean, and even in the Atlantic, you can find gentlemen who poop themselves into these great big containers, <laughs> and down they go, right into the water. Goodness knows what they do it for. I've been there. But when they get, they look through the windows sometimes, and they see little fish going by, and perhaps the odd octopardy, or maybe a wreck. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? That would make it very worthwhile getting down inside a diving bell because <laughs> there you would see through the window. <laughs> Sheila Hancock Williams. Williams. No, challenge you. No, I'm sorry. I was so swept up in your story, I pressed it by mistake. No, her <laughs> point, her point, her point, I'm still going. Yes, yeah, keep going then. All right, 60 seconds. I mean, sorry. <laughs> it can't be 60 seconds still. No, <laughs> no, no. no. no Wait, was, that, was that a mistake, your challenge? Yes, it was on his slip. Well, it's, it's bad luck on Derek. He doesn't get any points. And, uh, oh, no, no. Why? Well, you're going to give him a point for an incorrect challenge. I suppose he deserves one because you stopped him yes. going. Yes, all right. Yes. Derek has a point. And no, we middle, haven't got to there yet flow. because there are 14 seconds now, Derek. From This is I'm going from Sheila's challenge. 14 seconds left starting now. I had a dear friend called Belle O'Shaughnessy and she was wont to climb onto the top of the diving board and jump down and she could go into the water. I laid him, I asked him to believe uh, uh, Clement Roy, why have you challenged? Reputation of water. Yes, Absolutely right. Water. My goodness, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> three seconds for you with diving bells, Clement, I could, starting I now. Have if you stand seconds. on a diving board and project <laughs> yourself into the <laughs> At the end of that round, Clement Freud has a commanding lead at the end of that round, commanding over Derek, who has a commanding lead over Sheila and Kenneth, who are trailing somewhat. Kenneth, it's your turn to begin, and the subject, another historical one for you, Napoleon. <laughs> what do you know about the little Corsican? 60 seconds to tell us, starting now. Well, one of his very great generals, a brilliant engineer, and I would say a very clever strategist too, was Count Bernadotte. And after the disaster at Leipzig, he was approached by a foreign power, the Swedes, and asked to become the king. And he went, it must be said, to Napoleon and said, how do you feel about this? I don't want to look as though I'm doing a bunk, but it is a rather good offer. I mean, thrones aren't thrown at you every day of the week. And apparently Napoleon said, it's okay. And he went and did found the dynasty, which we know today as the Swedish royal family. And, of course, it was one of those descendants that was killed in the hotel. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, did you enjoy your little history lesson? Isn't that fascinating? Yes. And we none of us thought you'd take Napoleon off in that particular direction, I must say. I thought it was a bit devious when Napoleon said, OK. <laughs> I don't think it had been invented then, but still... Well, you he let him go, because he was being offered a kingdom. Anyway, Kenneth, you have leapt forward, but I you're still goodness. in the same position, I'm afraid. Oh, right. <laughs> Clement is still leading. But uh, you get an extra bonus point, because you started with the subject and finished with it, and you were not interrupted. <laughs> Clement Freud, your turn to begin. The subject is home movies. Can you talk to us about them for 60 seconds, starting now? My children think that home movies are large vans which dispatch people's processions. <laughs> Kenneth William, you well, challenge. Well, all, it's all over the place. Yes, it? yes, it was. I agree with your challenge. And there are 54 seconds left for home movies starting now. The best way to do this is to set up the camera with a time mechanism on it, and then you take all your clothes off and invite your friends to take theirs off as well. And... Uh, Derek, number one, you challenge. Take off. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm afraid too many people were taking off clothes. Well, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> they took them off and they took them off. So, Derek, I agree with the challenge, and you take the subject over, and there are 44 seconds for home movies starting now. What are the snags of Shabin's are home movies? Uh, Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Deviation, because he's mentioned another subject. You one, see, of one of the snags of show business was a subject in this show. Yes, I know, but he, he probably was now going... You can't no, keep I am on going not. Back. You cannot. He has got to be allowed to establish <laughs> the connection. He just used one sentence, one of the snags of show business home movies. You can't challenge at that point. We don't know whether it's deviation yet. So I must disagree with the challenge, Kenneth the Lass, and say Derek keeps the subject, and there are 42 seconds for home movies starting now. An awful jolly 16mm camera, which I go out with, and I take snaps of children going through the park. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Challenge. Because you don't take snacks with, with a movie, movie. That's perfectly correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly correct, and the audience obviously agree, and therefore, Kenneth, I agree with your challenge. 36 seconds left, home movies starting now. Preferably you should make them blue, and then you can sell them at a vast profit to everyone who says, Oh! Uh, Sheila Hancock, why do you challenge? Oh, I think it's deviation, don't you, selling blue movies? Well, I don't think home movies... Would be, I suppose you show them in the home. It's another interpretation. It's not the way one thinks of it, but alas, he's not... The way I think of it, mate, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> deviating from the subject on the card, so if <laughs> Kenneth asked you round any of you to a show in his home movies, be prepared and be warned. So, Kenneth, you gain another point, and there are 29 seconds for home movies starting now. One thing you must be aware of, and that is the flesh blinding the lens. Any cameraman will tell you that that can cause flare, and therefore always powder down any naked flesh before... Uh, Derek Nimmo, Charles. Yes, and for 14 seconds, Derek. Home movies starting now. Snap shooting is one good thing to uh, take Kenneth Williams home movies. Hesitation. He again tried to justify his snapshots on the home movies. I agree with your challenge, Kenneth, and you will have 10 seconds for home movies starting now. Well, obviously, Derek Nimmo is a great master at this kind of thing. Uh, Derek Nimmo, why are you challenged? I'd just like to endorse his remark. <laughs> I thought he was going to be modest and say, I'm not a great yeah. master. <laughs> yeah, I'm a boy. You must but be he, mad, he Nick. Couldn't. No, no, he <laughs> took the opportunity and he told them that he is a master, but he gives Kenneth a point That's and there are four seconds snaps. left for home movies starting <laughs> now. And he always says, oh, to shoot you. That's what I really want to do. <laughs> So Kenneth did a lot of speaking, and with a lot of challenges, he gained a lot of points, and he's leapt forward. Ooh. And Sheila Hancock, it's your turn to begin. <laughs> Sheila, the subject is pleasantries. Oh. Yes, you might well say that in this show, but can you give us an example or talk about them for 60 seconds, starting now? This is something which you get very little of when you appear in just a minute. <laughs> they are little phrases that make life easier. Things that you say to one another when you meet in the street, like... How do you do? What a lovely day. Isn't the world bright? Little jolly phrases. Uh, Derek Nimmo, why have you challenged? Little repetition. Oh, did I? Yes, but it was so little, I'm not going to challenge. Oh, no, no you must. No, no, it's not. Go on, let him have it. That I can't think of anything else to enjoy. say anyway. <laughs> let her have a go. Come on, there are 42 seconds for you, Sheila, having gained a point. Pleasantries starting now. Derek Nimmo. <laughs> Derek has got it anyway. Hesitation. Hesitation. All right, Derek. I can't deny it this time. 41 seconds for pleasantries starting now. Oh, my dear old fruit, what ho, how lovely to see you. My goodness, isn't this the most charming way to meet on this sunlit morning? Goodness, you're looking well today. How's your grandmother? Is she in splendid form as well? These are things that you exchange, rather like traders going... Uh, Kenneth Williams, why did you... Deviation has already been established as you exchange them. She had made that point in the street. I know, yes, but it, well, why are you challenging then? Well, why would we make it again? It's the repetition. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not repetition, but you must either be repeating a word or a phrase. And Sheila said it before, not Derek. So I'm afraid it's incorrect. Derek gains another point, and there are 17 seconds for pleasantries. Derek starting now. Oh, are you done, love? You look absolutely great as eh? Uh, Kenneth, why have you challenged? Because I can't understand a word he says. <laughs> It's a very good challenge. I couldn't understand either, so how do I judge? Could you understand, audience? Yes. Derek, say it again, will you? I said, how are you there, love? I... <laughs> now you're going to be had for repetition by Clement Freud. Uh, are you... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you couldn't understand. Kenneth, I quite agree with you. No, he does these funny voices every week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like you to hear someone else do funny voices it's very embarrassing it's annoying <laughs> but all I'm going to do is annoying yes and his competition as well so there we are Kenneth uh, he wasn't technically deviating from the subject of pleasantries but we couldn't understand him I'm going to charge no points leave the subject with Derek and say there are 15 seconds to continue starting now I once knew a gentleman from China who came to this country and went to the part of the country where we have uh, Clement Freud challenge repetition of country. Country. country Clement you gain a point and there are 8 seconds for pleasantries starting now the Duke of Wellington once came back from a shoot and said to his man I have <laughs> <laughs> Derek got in first that time. Hesitation. Hesitation, yes. He couldn't quite remember what he said. <laughs> Derek, there are three and a half seconds for pleasantries starting now. Marks of Uxbridge standing next to the Duke of Wellington, that particular time. God, sir, I've lost my leg. And congrats, I'm saying he An interesting situation at the end of that round. Gaining the extra point for speaking when the whistle went, Derek Nimmer now has a lead of one over Clement Freud. Derek, it's your turn to begin. The subject is swallows. Can you talk to us about them for 60 seconds, starting now? There was one rather nicely saying that one swallow doesn't make summer. I think that's awfully true, don't you? But it does make an evening if you're out with the beer. My goodness, you have a great tankard in front of you. Pick it up and you swallow away. A lovely thing, isn't it? All the froth over the top, pouring down the table, and yet inside you is going down this fermented milk <laughs> and brewing up inside your belly. And if you're a man... Clement Freud, why who challenge? The reputation of inside you. Yes, you were inside the ground. Yes, but uh, yes. idea of the, the, the beer brewing up inside you, too. <laughs> well, anyway, Clement, I agree with your challenge, so you get a point, and there are 38 seconds left for swallows starting now. The most popular formation in which these birds fly is known as the eagle, and swallows all over the world tend to group together with one in front, two behind, three thereafter, fanning out until a great... <laughs> a great hesitation <laughs> well done Derek there are 19 seconds to, for you to continue with swallows starting now when I was very small about four years old I used to confuse swallows with house martins but now I know better because their tails are quite different if you think about it the swallows have long thin tapering ones whilst the other birds are rather squat and they build rather pretty nests <laughs> In a uh, rather lovely thing, which, which is rather nice way, <laughs> and rather <laughs> same. Sorry. Repetition. Yes. Of what? Rather. Yes, yeah, so just like <laughs> the listeners to hear so that they all know that you've got a correct challenge. Uh, Clement, I agree with your challenge and you take the, the point and the subject. Three seconds left, starting now. When 29 Chinese gentlemen sit in one restaurant... <laughs> Afraid is all we have time for, and as you probably realised, um, Clement Freud and Derek Nimmer were very close before that round begin, began. So it was neck and neck, and they were battling it so keen that the other two didn't get much of a look in on the last round. But the final score is that Sheila was in fourth place, uh, who way behind Kenneth Williams, who was in a very good third place. But they were both behind Derek Nimmo, who was only one point behind this week's winner, Clement Freud. As I said before, we do hope you've enjoyed this particular edition of Just a Minute, and from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs> the chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by Simon Brett.